and thank you for joining me on our super special edition of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. I'm Bobby P. Jim is still again up in Boston uh, exploring the wine world up there, but I am joined by two very special guests, uh, and I think we're all going to have a lot of fun. Our, my first guest is Jody Liddy, a member of the West uh, Hartford, the Junior League of Hartford, and also Hi. executive director at Rebuilding Hartford Together. Rebuilding Together Hartford. Rebuilding Together Hartford. And uh, our other guest is Mr. Chuck Joseph. You probably have seen him. I think it was on two years ago. Time That's goes right. by so fast. Um, his family owns and operates the shop right in Canton and mm -hmm. also the shop right here in West Hartford. And besides being an all-around great guy, he knows his cheeses, he knows his wines, <laughs> and we are in for a boatload of fun this evening. So thanks That's for coming awesome. down, Chuck. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me. Mm -hmm. So because we're doing so many wines tonight, I know uh, normally we do four, but I think we're going to try to get to five tonight. Um, we have some interesting cheeses here, I think, and some really strong aroma of meats, which I think are hitting everybody. <laughs> and. Uh, this is the first time I've never done a holiday show with Jim. Normally, we always do a bubble show. Uh, this is, I think, our seventh filming of the show that will air at Christmas in January. Mm -hmm. And I'm not doing bubbles. Because Jim's not here, I said, you know what? I'm not going to do bubbles. I'm going to do a cheese-wine pairing. And I think that's great for the holidays. Absolutely. So what I'm starting off with, um, it's one that I'm somewhat familiar with. I'm not sure if you've had it before, Jody or uh, Chuck. It's the Mousson Gourmand. It's uh, from the southwestern region of France. Okay. It's a dry red. Um, the family's been operating the vineyard since 1887, over four generations. Um, they produce a lot of wonderful, easy-to-drink wines, which are generally a little bit pricier than wines in that region that you would generally find. Generally, wines from that area of France are usually on the lower price. Mm. These are hit the $17, $18, 19 $20 range. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've, won, they've won a lot of awards. They're very food-friendly and cheese-friendly. And I, what I'd like to pair with this one to first start off is a, a, a wine infused cheddar from Wisconsin. It's got some age to it. I will pass a little piece of cheese to Jody, and then we'll pass a little piece of cheese to Chuck. All right, thank you. And uh, there's no e easy way to do this, or no right way. Some people yeah. eat the cheese first, some people drink the wine first. I'm gonna eat the cheese first. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's really nice. That's great. It's got a great texture, but it's a little milder than some cheddars. It is a little milder. You know, the reason I got it a little milder, did you notice when you drank that red after we ate that, didn't it just like smooth and mm -hmm. become very easy on your palate? It definitely did. Very good. For a wine-infused cheddar uh, from Wisconsin, mm -hmm. a very small batch, um, I think this is a great pairing. When I taste it, I said, wow, this goes fantastic together because it's so nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it doesn't offend the palate at all. It really is smooth. And uh, this wine is available locally uh, mm -hmm. here in town, so you should have no problem finding it. That's the 2015 uh, vintage, but the 2016 is out now. Yeah. Um, but it drinks great, even though it's a 2015. Yeah. It doesn't really need a lot of age. I don't it think. certainly does not. And <coughs> one of the things that I like about all French wines, as people know who watch the show, is they tend to be a little on the earthier side, right. mm -hmm. a lot more terroir. And yeah. to me, they go good with a stronger cheese. I know you said this wasn't yeah. a stronger cheese, yeah. but I think it still pairs really nice and yeah, it's a good pairing for a holiday get together yeah and the wine isn't so full body that it's that it overpowers the cheese i think they really balance each other out pretty they do well. they do so, really nice how, do you know how long the cheese is aged you said uh, it had I, a little age huh? i have the wrapper and i'll end up mm. showing chuck after the show i okay. i cannot recall mm. but um uh, i know it's a small batch produced it's got to have at least local? a year i would think yeah actually i don't know if you sell this particular brand in your store we'll talk about that after the yeah, show yeah because sure. that was good take a look but uh, I, I really liked it when I sampled mm -hmm. it in the store. I thought uh, I thought it would go good with tonight's show. Mm -hmm. So well done. Good pick. We'll finish up this red, and uh, I think we're going to move to the Bar Barbera. Okay, that probably That's makes good. the most sense. And to me, the Barbera, for people who are familiar with wine, they always think of Italy, right. the Piedmont region. But this is a California Barbera, mm -hmm. and uh, California can make some nice Barberas. So I'm very curious because Chuck has been to Napa, yeah. and uh, he knows his California wines pretty well. <laughs> so if he's yeah. overly critical, I will not <laughs> take it offensive. Well, Have you had this particular one before? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, you know, and I lived in California for a few years, and um, you know, always enjoyed being able to travel up to Napa or Sonoma or even Paso Robles, where we have a wine from for later on in the show. And What's kind of nice about this is throughout the course of the show, we're going to have a couple different um, California expressions of grapes that are traditionally old world grapes. So this will be our first one and lo really looking forward to it. Now, Jared, I have to ask all those junior league parties, have you ever had a Barbera at one of your parties? <laughs> I don't think I have. It's not, I, 
I tend to take the easy way out and grab a cab or a Pinot mm. Noir. Yep, so this sure. is really fun to try different things that I don't normally do. That's right, actually why me and Jim also did the show all those years ago because people just get into ruts with you trying to sure. save red. Mm -hmm. yeah, and this is a great way to try different stuff. Oh. So I will start the pour and see everybody's glass is nice. empty. Yeah, let's do it. I think these wines too are, are generally, um, you know, intended to be um, drank relatively young. Um, they also come in at great price points compared to some of the other Italian wines. You know, if you get a traditional Barolo, it needs a lot of time before it's really going to open up and it really sets you back a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they're pretty expensive, so this is a great alternative to get into some Italian wines. You can, you can see the brick color on that too. And yeah. I, I should, for tasting <coughs> notes, uh, these are, this is a gold medal award winner in San Francisco wine competition and also gold in the Dan Burgers International Wine Competition. So th this wine has some, uh, some good standing in, in the wine world right now. Mm -hmm. Great, great bouquet. Oh, that's gonna that's gonna be very interesting with cheese. It's got a good body. It's a little juicy. It's a nice taste, yeah. It's a little spicy it's too. It's there was a little spicy to it. Um, kind of a tax when you take a sip of that. It's, it, it's funny. Uh, one of my tasting notes says toasty graham crackers. Really? And uh, I get some toast in this, but I'm not sure about the graham crackers. Hmm. Interesting. And this is actually supposed to go really good with soft cheeses uh, okay. of Barbera. Um, yeah, I'm not getting a graham cracker, but I <laughs> yeah. do like it a lot. It's very good. And uh, Chuck, I know you're a big cheese guy. What do you think we should try pairing? This yeah, you know, I was going to say, you mentioned soft cheeses. So we, the cheese that we have here, this is called a whiny goat. Um, mm -hmm. It's another wine-infused cheese. So that's why I thought it'd be interesting to bring that and compare it to the wine-infused cheddar that we just had. This one is imported from La Mancha, Spain. Um, the rind is washed and rubbed with wine during the curing process, um, and it's intended to be paired with um, full-body red wine. So I think it's probably time I to think give so. some this, a try. What do you a think? Barbera, this mm -hmm. Barbera is a pretty full-bodied wine, yeah, in my opinion. So it's so. a nice piece. Oh, you give me a whole giant ah. piece? Well, well, thank you very much. Don't feel pressure to eat all of it, but <laughs> who knows? You might want to. Oh, that's very nice. Well, I see, and Jody, I'll, I'll talk while you're, you're you know, <laughs> Thank you. This is why I love doing wine and cheese, mm -hmm. things like this. And as you know, Chuck, it is so nice to eat a piece okay. of cheese and then take a, a drink of red wine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's a oh, whole yeah. different mouth experience. I think it really, you know, the cheese is a fairly flavorful cheese and it really mellowed out the intensity of the wine mm -hmm. for me. Um, made it more approachable. I happen to like it, my wow. first sip before the cheese, but it makes it a lot more approachable, I think. I think, um, and you might agree with this, Jody, whenever you're having a party, you're having people over, people always, since I grab the wrong type of snacks when they're drinking, right. it's, they grab the, the chips or the big, bulky, heavy, salty stuff. Mm -hmm. People should spend a little bit more time with the cheeses at parties and just, right. you don't need to eat a lot of the cheese. You, yeah. I actually prefer to pre-cut it so people aren't mm -hmm. prone to take a Chuck <laughs> Joseph <laughs> yeah, piece yeah. of slice. <laughs> um, like a piece it, of cake yeah, size, right? right. <laughs> Because to me, it's just—it's a wonderful experience, and it really gives you a, it gives an, an example of how wine changes yeah. when you eat That's something and drink with it. I think too, the fun thing about cheeses is, you know, people sometimes are worried: Am I going to pick the right cheese? Is it going to be the perfect pairing for the wine that I'm serving? And sometimes we make it more complicated than it really right. needs to be. If you have a variety of cheeses, I like to put together a variety of textures: so some hard, some soft, some that can be spread, um, you know, some cow's milk, some sheep's milk, some goat's milk, then you just get a variety of flavors and people can sample for themselves and find the right mm -hmm. pairing. So it's better to have a variety and let people try than worry too much about the precisely perfect pairing you know, for your wines. Because everybody's palate might be a little bit different. What right. works for one Very person mm -hmm. isn't going to work for another. And uh, I just have always loved cheese pairings with, with wine. And as, as Chuck knows, you know, we've had parties together and even parties when we haven't been together. Mm. Sometimes if you have too much, too many people, you can't really sort of wrangle them in <laughs> right. to, well, you should be trying this cheese or that cheese because, you yeah. know, it, people just do what they want. Yeah, right. yeah so. too much excitement. It, there's too much around, excitement. Yeah. Well, how could that be exciting? Yeah. It's you or it's me. It's, you know, look, the Bobby P. server. <laughs> I've never worn this sweatshirt on the show in all the years I've had it. Perfect. Nice. And, uh, you know, I, I said I was finally going to wear it because I'm not doing a tuxedo, which I normally do <laughs> when we film in December. So, yeah. uh, it's Bobby P. server of wine. So I'm honored to be here for the occasion. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is, this is a good pairing. And this, uh, yeah, in general, fine. Barbera, because it's more of an Italian wine, it's actually one of the older 
varietals, isn't mm -hmm. it, too? Yeah. It's been true. produced for quite a long time. Yeah, yeah. I think it's an excellent wine. Really and this can just be dinner. <laughs> I, think it I am a big right. proponent of cheese, meats, uh, good conversation at a dinner table. To yeah. me, you get just as full right. and mm -hmm. have just as good of a time eating that as you would a, a full course meal. And cheese has a lot of healthy attributes. I mean, it has lots of calcium in it. There's protein in it. So, you know, in many ways, it's a, you know, an ideal food. And you guys uh, at Shopper, you guys have some good cheeses. So yeah, I mean, we have try. a pretty large international cheese selection. Um, you know, Swiss Wine and Goat is available at our sorts, probably available at other retailers in the area, too. It's pretty common um, and not too pricey. But, yeah, we try to have a range from different parts of the world, um, and I try to taste them as often as possible. <laughs> it's not exactly in my job description, but I try to make it, it uh, part be. of my job description. <laughs> is this similar to Drunken Goat? Yeah, it's okay. a very similar style. Okay. Yeah, I, off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Uh, well, drunken goats, so it must be made of goat's uh, milk as well. It is. So yeah, I imagine probably similar techniques that are used, maybe okay. different producers mm -hmm. where it comes from, they're playing off each other, but nice. yeah. Well, I think that's another winner, I think, for I your with so your cheese yeah. and the Barbera. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a very reasonable price, Barbera. I think that's mm -hmm. in the 12 to 13.99 range. That's awesome. That's a steal. That it's is. a steal. Yeah. And, uh, you're I, would definitely, I would pay 20 to $25 mm -hmm. for that wine well, that's easily. What I, right. That's what I mean. It, it, to sample wines and go to tastings, you'll taste wines in that price range that will fool a lot of people. Mm -hmm. sure. Even people with a really good palate, they will say, yeah. well, that doesn't drink like a $10 or $11 bottle yeah. of wine. Yeah. And uh, it, it's a really, really nice drinking wine. Yeah, so. it's perfect. And it's better than always going with the cab, right? Right. <laughs> right. No, I love it. I'm going to try well, it. Well, I think, yeah, people are looking for something unique, something mm -hmm. with a story. You know, right. we have some kind of unique wines um, mm -hmm. to look at. And I think, you know, people are just as interested in learning more and hearing the story behind the wines as much as they Very are true. tasting. So. So I got to quickly say, everybody, who thumbs up with the first two uh, wine pairs. Absolutely, yeah. No I'm dogs. Reach one now. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to defer to you, Chuck, on the next okay. one because we do yeah. have the Portuguese red. But should we? Stick to the reds and go to the whites and then finish with your red. Should we go with the Portuguese or go to a white right now? I have no idea. I mean, I think we can't really go wrong. We're going to be tasting wine. Then we'll just so do the, the Portuguese Let's stick red. with the yeah. Portuguese. Let's round out, you know, uh, and then we can try this Italian white, talk a little bit about that. Now, yeah. I have to thank Jim for the Utica Dao because this is one of his wines that he's now currently um, involved with up in Boston. Mm. And uh, for those who are familiar with Portuguese wine right now, it's really nice. exploded on the market. Mm -hmm. More so up in Boston area, but it's slowly creeping down into Connecticut. The values you're getting in cost and quality are quite extreme. Mm -hmm. And they know how to make wine in Portugal. Mm -hmm. They've been doing it for just as long as they have in other regions. Um, the prices are great because a lot of people aren't familiar with it. Right. So it's not a huge demand. But that is changing. So <clears throat> this particular one, um, and I'm going to go by what Jim told me because I only had this one about six months ago, so I couldn't quite remember. But very suave, complex nose. Mm. Get some baking spices in with the aroma. Interesting. I almost smell a little candy on there. A little black licorice. Mm, uh, that's there you what go. It is. Most yeah. Portuguese wines, uh, this is a 2015 or 16, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are ready to drink now. You don't really yeah. have to age them at all. Yes. And I think uh, you said, uh, Jody, you've been to Portugal. I have. And you know how good the wines are there. And how affordable they are. Exactly. <laughs> And they have to because people drink that every day. Mm -hmm. That's a really interesting taste. It almost like when I first sipped it, I tasted a lot of sweetness, but then there's a lot of sort of spice and strength on the finish there. So that's a you know, pretty unique combination. It is the finish. Yeah. It hits you yeah. a little bit on the juicy side first, right, but yeah. it does finish on the drier side. So I'm very curious how the cheese is going yeah, to be. Yeah, your cheese first. Might be good pairing with the cheese. And this is actually a blend. I'll get into the varietal grapes in one moment. Okay, great. Yeah, your particular cheese does the same thing. It cuts a little of that sweetness mm. right off the bat. Um, it makes it a little bit more even in regards to the taste profile. Yeah, you know, it works together. So the, the grapes that are in this particular blend are Tempranillo, mm. Tinto Fino, uh, Mencia, and Tinta Rodiz. So it is a blend of four, three or four. Sometimes it could be a blend of five different types of grapes. Yes. Oh. But I think so, the, so Dao is the region? Is that yes, right? Dao is okay. the region. Dao okay. is the region of Portugal. Awesome. And the, uh, the vineyard is uh, Utica. And uh, Jim has brought some of these down before, but we haven't mm -hmm. brought them on the show. Mm. And I've yet to have a bad 
wine that he's brought in. Yeah. And the price point of these are going to blow you away. These are under seven dollars. Oh my gosh! Oh my God, really? Under seven dollars. That's amazing. To me, the label alone is worth yeah. seven dollars. <laughs> Well, see, yeah, if you're wonder. having a big gathering, that's a great wine you can serve and not spend a ton of money because you're going to have to buy a lot and of Jody, it. And, Jody, as I always tell people who say that, not only that, but it looks more expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? it does. People it aren't totally seeing does. the usual Crane Lake, right. uh, which they know oh, costs four ninety nine right. or three ninety nine. Mm -hmm. People see that and say, wow, Jody splurged. Wow. She's got a $12, $13 <laughs> bottle of wine for this party. So. And not just one bottle, a lot. Yeah. I got a case of it because <laughs> yeah. it's a big party. You know, it's very good. And people will be impressed at how sophisticated you are to yes. present such an elegant Portuguese wine, mm -hmm. you know, that they've never heard of before. So, But once again, that's another example of Portuguese wines in general. Mm -hmm. They're all going to be very easy to drink. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to probably impress a wine snob. Mm -hmm. But even a wine snob is going to say, that's pretty easy to drink wine. And it, sure. it serves its purpose. It goes mm -hmm. very well with food. Yeah. And that's really what this show is about tonight. Is it's the holidays. This show is going to be on in December, or I'm sorry, January, and uh, that's what you want. Right. You want an easy to drink wine, please your guests, please yourself, and have a good time. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's another winner. It is. It's it's hearty, and the funny thing is, usually when you say what it's supposed to taste like or smell like, I'm th that person that never gets that. I always <laughs> get something like for me, I thought it was earthy, mm. uh, not in a bad way, earthy. Yeah. It just let me ask you a question, Jody, because another one of my notes says uh, you get some, some herb tobacco, a little red licorice. Maybe that's the that's early part. The early okay. part, the tobacco aspect of it. Yeah. I, don't know that. I would agree with that. And you can see there's some legs on there, too. Yeah. So yeah, that's some nice structure. $7 legs, imagine <laughs> that. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I've got to say, very, very good start for mm -hmm. our yeah, first Yeah, very ones. strong mm -hmm. start. Uh, good cheeses cool. and good reds so far. So, Absolutely. but I have the pressures on for the white. <laughs> That's true. I never am disappointed by Chuck stuff, so oh, I'm very man. curious about how the whites mm -hmm. are going to be. Yeah. So, do you want to switch to the white next? Do you think, or do you want to just round out with red? Why don't we round it off with the okay. red? I'll pass my glass now to you. Sure. To talk about that while you're pouring. Okay. Great. So, <clears throat> the red here, I'm pretty excited about. I think it's going to be pretty unusual. Um, you can see from this wow. decanter, the back, yeah. there's a ton of sediment in there. Um, which tells you a little bit about the producer. Um, this is from a producer called Ambith Estates, and uh, they're located in Paso Robles, California. Um, one of the reasons I chose it is this is a blend of um, Sangiovese and Tempranillo, and so I knew that we had chosen this Barbera, which is a California expression of an Italian grape. So here's another California expression of Sangiovese, which is the grape that's planted the most in Italy, uh, but also has some Tempranillo in it, which I didn't even know was part of this Portuguese blend. So kind of another way to check out a new world expression of some of these old world grapes. Um, this winery, I guess I should pour myself a little yeah. bit too. Um, this winery is committed to 100% um, dry farming, which means they don't irrigate their vines. They're also a biodynamic and organic producer. Um, and basically what biodynamic means is that they think that all the elements they need to run a successful farm can be contained as one ecosystem in the farm. Interesting. So they have animals there, they have a garden there, um, you know, there's forest elements, and you know, the whole system works together where you know, the animals are fed from the garden, and then the animal waste is turned into compost that then fertilizes the plants. Mm -hmm. And it's just this cycle that can continue in a very sustainable way. Mm -hmm. um, and then some of their winemaking techniques, you know, they foot stomp all the grapes. Um, there's no um, additives, including no sulfites. Um, and some of their that, wine... That's important. That's no sulfites. Correct, yeah. And sulfites, too. You know, the, sulfites are naturally occurring, so mm -hmm. it's not like a chemical additive, right. but... Um, sulfites, um, some studies show they may produce headaches and hangovers, and of course we all want to avoid those. So this wine has no sulfites. Um, some of their wines are aged in um, terracotta amphoras that are handmade in Italy, and so just kind of an old school, sustainable approach to wine in California. Mm -hmm. So I think their wines are really interesting and unique. They can be a little unpredictable, so I don't really know what to expect. But I don't either, but it's really got quite interesting a smell. Color. Yeah, get a whiff. And whenever I hear a nice. foot stamped grape, I just think that the I love that. Yeah, that foot stamped right. doesn't it's come It's not what we're smelling now. No, it does not. <laughs> yeah, it's a very strong smell. Oh, wow. man. Wow. The aroma is powerful, but when you take a sip. Oh, wow. It's, it's fairly smooth. Yeah. yeah. 
but it ends very dry, which is really nice. Yeah, very dry. Yeah, really tannic. Oh. Um, this is actually the first wine we drank tonight that opens up after it hits mm -hmm. your mouth. Yeah. All right. Well, I, so I opened this bottle probably about two hours before we started the show and did a, a gentle decanting of it. And I think that's essential. This is a 2011, so it is a little bit older. But with wines from this producer, they, they really do need a lot of time to breathe. Otherwise, they can be a little uptight. So yeah, That's actually one of the things we don't quite do as often on the yeah. show because of, you know, we're pressed for time and you know, we're sure. both busy when we do the yeah. show. But decantering wine can make a huge difference. For sure. And even yeah. if it's not an expensive bottle... Yeah. In general, I'm a sort of a big proponent of decantering because anytime yeah. you can open up a wine, especially obviously a red wine, mm -hmm. I think you're going to get a little bit better flavor. Yeah. So yeah, at least do, an but. hour, or how long do you need to? I'm not an expert in that, but uh -huh. um, you know, I think it depends, I guess, to a certain degree on the age. I mean, if you have a wine that's really old, you know, 20 or 30 years old, I think it doesn't have that much life once you open it. It right. might only have 30 minutes or an hour of life, so mm -hmm. you want to. You know, maybe do a gentle decan and then drink it pretty quickly. But you know, wine, I, the oldest wines I really consume are maybe five to ten years old, and mm -hmm. you know, I find it you know an hour on the long side. But like Bobby said, I mean, yeah. if you're in the middle of something, if you're cooking for a dinner party, yeah. you know, sometimes it gets away from you. And there's a lot of products too you can buy. I was um, going to ask you pour it through because I've yeah, done I've that. I use those okay. all the time. And I think one. they're very effective. Mm -hmm. I think that it really opens up the smell. Um, you know, and helps to make the you know the flavor more pronounced too. So now, is this wine good. local? You can get this locally. Um, you know, I purchased this on the website, so I'm not aware of any local um, carriers. There, they may be so available. So do some research but, and look it up. Yeah, it's just Ambeth Estates is the name of the winery, and they have their own website. They can direct ship to Connecticut. Oh, great! Oh, nice. um, they have a wine club, and the wine club is uh, very laid back. They don't give you a distribution. They let you pick what you want. They don't oh, charge every nice. month unless you buy something? No, it's two times a year, and you can buy two bottles to 100 bottles, whatever you want. So, um, And there's, I think, a f maybe a 15 or 20% discount when you're in the club. So, you know, if you want to give it a try, if you are into sustainable farming practices, it's kind of a, a unique wine in that regard. What's well, a good How much does this sell for? Uh, this one is probably maybe around $50. So Ooh. it's a little bit more of a premium um, product. Well, I want to thank you for bringing our $50. Yes, oh, it's my thank pleasure. You. Yeah, well, you know, I just like to share it with mm -hmm. people who I think might enjoy the unique characteristics of it. And oh, so I've wonderful. got a few of these, you know, kicking around that I've brought out for special dinner parties. But, mm -hmm. you know, part of the nature of these wines, because they really don't intervene a lot in their, you know, production, right. um, is you don't really know what to expect. Right. Um, and so sometimes it's hard to plan a dinner around these wines because you don't really yeah. know. So you really have to have somebody who loves wine right. and is going to sort of appreciate what the wine brings to yeah, the table. The third tier friends are not going to be getting that no. at the <laughs> no. Joseph House. No. I get that yeah. already. So it's, uh, right, I'm glad right. I made the It's in tonight. the special uh, <laughs> fridge in the cellar that not everyone exactly, has access exactly. to. <laughs> so I'm curious, what should Very we pair good. that with? Well, I think we should try it. Go back with the... Yeah, uh, I would try it maybe with oh. either cheese and just kind of see. Thank you know, you. these are, um, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll take another bite of this. I think it could work with either one. You can even mm -hmm. see in the glass, you get a little floating sediment because mm -hmm. it's also unfiltered. So um, it's totally normal to see sediment in the bottle there. You know, we can see it here from where we yep. uh, are doing the show. There's quite a bit in the glass mm. and, or in the bottle. And well, that uh, wine-infused uh, Wisconsin cheddar, that really that was, was nice. That was very good with it. I agree. That was really nice. Mm -hmm. I have to try Chuck's now. Hmm. I'm really curious to go into the white next because I know that's going to be very interesting. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. <laughs> mm. I got some earthy flavors after I had that cheddar mm -hmm. and then tried the wine again. I think actually this goes a little bit better than uh, really? the cheese that mm. uh, you had. But that's just my palate. I think um, oh. it, it, it's a more even tasting flavor. I'm going to agree with you. Yeah, that, that, but that's I love the wine. Really nice. It's really nice. very nice. Yeah, it's a, that's another winner, I would say. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're four for four right now. But so I feel the, better with the decanting because I, it's a great idea and I never get around to doing it. So mm -hmm. I did finally buy that little the thing. And, yeah. yeah. Well, and you know, there is something elegant, you know, when you pour right. it into the decanter, it looks really beautiful as mm -hmm. the wine kind of runs over, you know, presenting it at the right. dinner table. So, you know, there's some nice, um, you know, 
As long as the Some right person is pouring around it, it. <laughs> <laughs> not spilling. You always get the yeah. one person who thinks, "Oh no, I'll do it for you. I'll do it yeah. for you." And then that nice wine ends up being part of your, oh, yeah. your dinner table. It turns cloth. into a sauce yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. quickly. But yeah, it's you know those aerators. I think work great. Yeah. Well, that's a thumbs up for me. I yeah, can't complain me about too. that. Oh, I'm glad you that liked it. That was very good. Awesome. So I'm really curious about what you have to say about your next yeah, one. Yeah. So so this white wine here, um, I came across, and the reason I I thought it would be fun to try it is. This is a white wine that comes from Piedmont. Yeah. So Piedmont, Italy, um, you know, in northern Italian regions, really known for their red wines. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I knew that we'd be trying this California um, Barbera. I always struggle to say that. Yeah. Right. I want to say Barbara. So Barbera. Yeah. So I thought, you know, well, here's a white wine that comes from the region where that grape is, you know, is, is planted a lot. And you hardly ever come across a white wine from that area. So I just thought it'd be cool to try it. This is one that I haven't tried before. I'm looking forward um, to it. So let's pour it and see what we find out about it. Are you a white wine drinker, Jody, generally? I am not, oh. but I'm going to give it. I will try anything at least <laughs> once. And well, I think my problem with white wine is usually I would drink it in the summer, and okay. it's cold and it's nice and it goes down too quickly. Mm. And that's probably why I stay Well, you know, I, I hate to say this, we'll have to drink this one real quickly because we're yeah. coming close to the, uh, okay. to the top mm -hmm. of the hour here. So, okay. but I'm right. gonna taste this. Yeah. Oh, that's smooth. And very, very even keel. There's not a lot going on there. Yeah, it is actually really smooth. It's like, tastes a little bit, I tasted some uh, melon, maybe cantaloupe or. I get the cantaloupe, absolutely. Um, you know, nice color, pretty pale. Um, you know, the tasting notes said it might actually have a green tinge to it, so I'm not really seeing that. I probably see more straw. We had red in the grass, the though. Straw, yeah, so straw, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's actually pretty smooth and mm -hmm. easy drinking and not overpowering And at it's all. not overly no. sweet, which a lot of times people think right. sure. an Italian white or any white, oh, God, it's going to be sweet. Obviously. Right. Not this at all. This is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. yeah. This might be the answer to your summer there white wine woes, because I think this could be refreshing. Um, you know, you don't necessarily even really need to pair it with food. I think you probably could, right. but you know, it has just enough on its own to be nice, easy drinking. Mm -hmm. It is. It, I, once again, I'm really impressed by this white. And generally, I'm a pretty stickler. I like my Sauvignon Blancs. Sure. Under, yeah. Yeah. But this is really <laughs> phenomenal. Too. Yeah. So I'm really surprised we got through five bottles tonight. Yeah, we we drink a little bit quicker than we do, but normally do. But really, guys, I want to thank Jody for being on the show. Thank you for coming well, thanks down. Thanks for having me. This was wonderful. Chuck, as always, thank you for bringing such a wonderful oh, it's example. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having your me. Your family stores cheeses yeah, yeah. and, of course, the wine. Yeah. And uh, I hope everybody, like I said, has a great holiday. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Jim, best to you. I know you're out there working hard to find more wines for us to use in the future. So everybody have a great holiday. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Uh, Hanukkah? Happy Hanukkah, too, right? Hanukkah, right. And uh, until next time, keep all of us in your wine cellar.